But anyway, we've been resting him, so he's got a big game this weekend. He's like, I'm like, dude, are you going to be ready to go? And he's like, I'm hopeful. (laughs) 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 Did he seriously say that? Welcome to My Got A Podcast. I'm Jim Wood. In this episode, John Powell and I answer questions from you, our listeners, during this Georgia bye week. As always, remember to check out store.mygotapodcast.com to see our latest merch. And you can follow us on social media at My Got a Podcast. Finally, if you like what you hear, please subscribe, rate, five stars obviously, and review the show. If you leave us a review, you just might hear it on an upcoming episode. Now, let's join the conversation in progress. So, Jim, what are, you, what are, we, what are we drinking today? I, I actually have Maker's Mark. You have Maker's I, Mark? I have the, uh, what is it? Bourbon Club of Concord 2021 uh, barrel pick is what I have. Oh, yeah. How is it? How is it? I've only had it once. Um, I had it. I actually had this after the Kentucky game when I had my buddy over. Um, <laughs> nice. So, uh, so you like yeah. it? How does it compare to like Maker's Forty Six? Because I think you have a bottle of that too, right? I do have the Forty Six. Um, I, I gotta have. I feel like I gotta have it again. Uh, it, that wasn't my first bourbon that night. <laughs> <laughs> so, was it, your, was it your first rodeo? <laughs> so, I feel like I need to kind of rehab it. So let me let it hit the ice a little bit, and then I'll tell you in a minute. Fair enough. Well, while while whilst yours is uh, marinating, um, and it's clear ice goodness, I'm sure. Um, yeah, yeah, same. He's showing. Yep, you got the clear ice up. So I made an observation as we were just sitting here. Uh, I'm drinking Maker's 46 actually. So uh, shocker, we agree. Um, <laughs> mine actually has an S four on it. <gasps> what? That's in the fourth. Oh my gosh, so does mine. <laughs> yes. I think it has something to do with the farm that it was on. Uh, I think it's I think it's after um, Star Hill. I think it's after Star Hill Farm, maybe. I'm not sure. That's amazing. It's a sign. But it's a sign. Um, um, I believe it's part of the logo, so I, I don't know that it's like a unique thing. Or I, I, it may be a unique thing. So um, we'll, we'll, yeah. consult, we'll consult the bourbon Twitters on that. Yeah, I guess I've never really thought about it or looked at it. So uh, I'll have to go check my bottle of 46 when we're done and see if uh, it's got the same one on there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, anyway, that was a nice little bourbon observation because that's what I'm that doing. That was nice. That was nice. That was nice. That was a nice tie in there. Uh, speaking, of, speaking of Stetson Bennett. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. There's been, some, I mean, there's been some chatter about the quarterback situation. <laughs> there has been. They, we had the uh, the Graham Coffee thread that was giving like infinite uh, notifications on, on Wednesday of the week. So uh, <laughs> that was interesting. Uh, I forget the one account that wouldn't stop. Uh, but anyways, uh, we had that. And then we had the ESPN article. Uh, so we are recording a day later than we said we would. Uh, so this is Thursday. Um, we had the ESPN article that came out today um, where they talked to Kirby and there was a, a bit of a hint of like, maybe we'll play two quarterbacks. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know what to make of that because we, we know from Kirby talking about player health, not never to believe him. So I don't know. I feel like we're going to, we'll, we'll find out. We're, we're going to find out what happens against, against Florida. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to get too caught up and too worried about it until we see who steps on the field. And even then, yeah. I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it with either guy. It's yeah, kind of I don't know. You can only you can only uh, banter so much with uh, what is it, 78 characters or whatever, 120 characters, whatever it is. Um, it used to be 126. It used to be 126. 120. I don't know what it is these days. Yeah, anyway. whatever. Twitter can only give you so much uh, communication leeway. So some of those conversations I had to just kind of walk away from, even though I entertained them for far too long. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Here's the, here's the thing, like the, the body of work that Stetson's put together, I just, 
have a hard time believing that um, a coach, a, a coach's son, who is now an elite coach, um, is going to just yank the job from a kid that's done nothing but everything that you've asked him to do and done it at a high level. Um, he doesn't need to throw the ball 40 times for 300, 400 yards. I recognize yeah. that that's like, that's like the gold standard these days is, you know, 70 plus percent completion percentage on 40 attempts for 450 yards and three touchdowns and no interceptions or whatever. It's like, that's like everybody's wet dream when it comes to quarterback play. Right. But like mm-hmm. we haven't needed it and we're still beating the pants off of people. And so like, I mean, I don't know. I just don't know what else, like what more does Stetson have to do to prove anyone wrong? Cause we, even on this show, we've talked about it. Like we've, <laughs> You know, I don't know. I don't know if Stetson can get us there. I, I was, I was one of those people preseason. Like, I just don't think that Stetson can do it. Like, I, we basically had written the kid off. So, to his yeah. credit, like he's played out of his played out of his mind. So, I don't know. I just, I, I will be shocked if Stetson is not the starter. Um, well, I guess I should, I, I should. I would not be shocked if Stetson is the starter. Um, okay. And I would also not be shocked if JT was the starter because. You know, if he's healthy, I think he does bring a little bit more dynamic play. But at the same time, um, Stetson, Stetson's done nothing to warrant giving him the chop. Yeah, I agree. I, I mean, basically, I think, uh, you know how like when we were uh, preseason, we were approaching the season and like Twitter had gotten kind of heated. And I think we were just talking about like, man, we really need football. Like we need football so that we can <laughs> talk about actual games instead of ridiculousness i feel like all of this stuff is like just basically like filling the vacuum that was created by a bye week (laughs) (laughs) so it's like intensified the 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 back and forth you know on on social media and such um so i don't know At, at the end of the day like i think we're in good hands with either quarterback and i'll say what i've said in the text thread and what i've said i put it on twitter tonight too uh in in response to john's john's tweets uh i said that you know my heart wants Stetson, but my my head thinks JT, but neither of those matter. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah. Um, I know we've got uh, – so, you know, obviously no game to talk about, but Kirby did have a press conference. So we, we talked about what he said to ESPN. Uh, a, couple of, a couple of updates from the, from, the pre- uh, from the press conference this week, though. Um, one was the update on Chris Smith. So it looks like he actually was cleared to play against Kentucky, and the plan was to play him in the dime package, but we never went into the dime package, so he didn't play. Um, so it sounds like he actually may be back and in, in playing for Florida. Um, but then we have three guys who Kirby said he's hopeful to, hopeful to get back. So we'll have to monitor that uh, to see if he repeats that next week. But Arian Smith, Kenny McIntosh, and Amir Speed. He all listed as hopeful to get back. So oh, the kiss of death. Exactly. Not that, but maybe <laughs> maybe there's time to retract by next week. So we'll see. We'll, we'll have to monitor yeah, that. We, we do have another press conference to labor through. Exactly. Um, <laughs> but the other you know news, uh, Scott Cochran is back with the team. Um, so that's great news. Happy happy for Scott and, and his family. Um, I do believe know, that, that there was. I do believe that there was some clarification that it is officially in an off-field role for now. That so is Muschamp, correct. Yeah. Yeah, so Muschamp will retain, will keep doing what he's doing, and Cochran will basically be an analyst. He'll be a, assisting the special teams in an off-field role, is what Kirby said. So Did, did, did Cochran get the JT Daniels treatment? Uh, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. He also got frommed. Uh, possibly. He got frommed. He got frommed. <laughs> um, see, not in the press conference, but like things that have kind of leaked out of practice uh, since Monday. So the word on the street is that Kendall Milton is injured. Um, like a strained MCL is what the people are saying. Um, so I don't, so that could be anywhere like four to six weeks. I know he had a knee injury last year, so I don't know if that's um, the same thing or what. I can't really remember. Um, and the Dodgers just took the lead. Sorry, we're recording this during... <laughs> Brave Dodgers. Uh, they just took the lead on what? Dang. Two run homer. They've had two home runs in this inning, uh, in the second inning. Uh, 
Uh, take take a take a sip of bourbon, Jim. Yeah, sip of bourbon. All right, so this is kind of this is a little hot, I'd say, but it is good. It is good. At any rate, um, and then there were some Twitter rumors today, with which if it's on Twitter, obviously it's true. But there were some tweets about Nicobe Dean. Um, maybe he did, or maybe he didn't get banged up at practice. So who knows? We'll see. Um, I haven't seen that from anyone official, just on a, a random a random tweet. <laughs> so um, who knows? But that's, inside, that's so what I got. According, according to inside sources. <laughs> yeah, inside sources being my Twitter timeline. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, or a tweet that was sent to me, actually. Uh, not even someone that I follow. So who knows? Um, that was it, what I had for, for news and notes. Um, so, I don't know, with no, with no game, you want to just hop straight into the, the bye week listener questions? Let's go. We, we've got a lull in the activity, so let's, let's, let's knock it out. All right. First up, we have Jason Huggins uh, at HugDog18 on Twitter. What's your favorite thing to do with friends and family on a UGA bye weekend? Favorite things to do on a UGA? All right, I'll let you go first. Oh. Mine's a little complicated. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, I feel like right now, like I can't really remember because right now we're usually doing soccer. So like, for example, you know, so where we live in the Charlotte area, like this weekend, we, we actually have two games. So we got a game locally, home game on Saturday, and then uh, a game up in Boone, North Carolina um, on, on Sunday. So uh, I guess in general, I would say like, just like to kind of get out and about a bit. Um, I guess now that I think about it, probably like good at for me, like uh, like a day trip ish to Asheville, North Carolina. Um, mm. so that's not too far from us. Um, great town, a lot of good food, uh, a lot of good breweries. Um, so really enjoy heading over there and uh, probably doing like lunch at Sierra Nevada, something like that. That, that that's one of our favorites. That's that's awesome. Dude, I, I've never been. You know, I, I, we've talked about it. I, I'm gonna eventually make a trip up to Asheville, and I'm gonna drag you with me so uh, you, can sh- you can show me the ropes yeah it's a good um, so all right so <laughs> I, I mentioned this uh, on, on twitter earlier today but um so my wife and i actually have a wedding anniversary typically around bi week time with how it's been structured over the last like 10 12 years or whatever mm. um so the bi week always occurs before the Florida game, the week before the Florida game, which typically is around Halloween-ish, right? Yeah. So our anniversary is the 24th of October, 1024. Shout out, Lindsay Powell. Thanks for being <laughs> <marrying> here. <me>. Um, <laughs> so this weekend is actually our, uh, you know, this bye weekend is, is our anniversary. And one of the things that we do is we go to Bert's Pumpkin Farm. Um, it's like kind of like a tie in with my wife's birthday, which was the 13th. Um, but, uh, but basically, but basically we go to Bert's pumpkin farm and then we go up to Amicalilla falls, um, with, with family and or friends or both. Um, Mm. and we just, we just spend the day up there. So do the pumpkin farm thing, hay rides with the kids and funnel cakes and barbecue and all that kind of stuff up at Bert's farm. Have you ever been, have you ever, have you ever been to Bert's farm? Uh, I don't think I have. I've been to Amicalola Falls, but I've not been. Yes. Yeah. So if you've been to Amicalola Falls, literally right across the street, pretty much like Mm -hmm. you could probably throw a baseball at it, um, is Bert's pumpkin farm. It's this giant farm with, you know, all the big pumpkins and all that stuff. Um, it's just, it's like, it's like my wife's happy place for fall kind of thing. Everybody gets their Han Solo uniforms on and, uh, we roll out. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, um, lots of um, lots of pumpkin spice all these things yeah we got jim you know i have to stop at the starbucks before, uh, right next to 75 before i go north <laughs> right right obviously 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 <laughs> i'm not an idiot <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so that's that's usually what we do but the best part of it which is my favorite part and i think truly if you were to peel back the layers like it's probably her favorite part too is the, the Marriott Conference Center there at Amicalola Falls has a basement 
with a overlook that has changed drastically over the years. It's, we've, it's funny, we've kind of watched that property grow up, but um, they have a beautiful fire pit and like clear glass overlook of, um, you know, like the, the blue, the, the blue Ridge or whatever. Um, mm. I can't, I can't remember the town, but the smoky mountains, like all that kind of stuff. So you can see like all the, it's, it's just got a great, a fantastic view at the basement there. And so we bring a cooler and a picnic and all that stuff. And, um, we just hang out up there, throw the football around. Um, it hasn't been too cool recently. So, um, a lot, a lot of times we'll just, you know, be bundled up and having fun, but, um, lately it's been really warm at that time of year. So anyway, that's, that's like our, it's typically our, our bi-week, our bi-weekend situation. Nice. Yeah. Oh, what, that's good. I, uh, I know, it took me a minute to, to remember kind of what we've done. Cause like I said, this year, uh, we'll be driving around for soccer. <laughs> or similar, yeah. similar like mountain areas for us. So that's cool. Nice. Um, we would normally we would normally have soccer, but I we have to take off that day. So <laughs> okay. gotcha. All right, let's see. We next we got Walt Dog NC. Is this team too focused and too hashtag elite to have a trap game this year? Uh, that was it. Uh, Go Dogs Road to Indy. Uh, <laughs> so what's what's a trap game, Jim? I don't know. Yeah. What, what, is, yeah. what is that? I think by, I think by definition, a trap, trap game would be when you are heavily favored and uh, at least not necessarily lose, but the team can kind of sneak up on you. Um, are, we, are, they too, are they too elite for that? I mean, obviously any given Saturday, but I've seen nothing in the body of work of the teams that are left on our schedule that would – suggest that there would be a trap game mm. on the roster. Um, I don't know. We've said it before, but this just feels different. So I would say that the only trap game left would probably be mentally the Florida game. However, that has not been a rivalry for this group of players here recently. If anything, <laughs> the loss last year um, probably is – I I would I would hate to be Dan Mullen. I would hate to be Florida um, this week, uh, this coming week. So, yeah, I don't know, man. They've got a world of pain coming their way. I have a feeling if Kirby could, he probably will score a hundred points. <laughs> I I would say, yeah, I don't I don't see Florida as a potential trap game because of the fact that they beat us last year. If we had won the game last year, and then their season was going like theirs is, and ours was going like this, then I would be like Munsoning, kind of like ah, oh, trap game, you know we're going to let Florida be a trap game, but I don't, I don't think that's the case. So aside from that, I mean, you know, we got what Missouri, Tennessee, uh, Charleston Southern and Georgia tech. So, I mean, those all have the makings of, by, by definition of a, of a trap game, right. If, if any of those were to be close, I just don't, mm-hmm. I, I, I do think, um, I don't know if it's even about the, it, to me, it's like about the whole trap game thing is about being elite between the ears, right? Not even so much talent. That's what leads to trap games is lack of focus, lack, you know, um, lack of focus, lack of intensity. Um, I, I do think they're too dialed in to let that happen this year. So that's my yeah, take. Uh, I agree. Okay. Just beat everybody. Exactly. Uh, Aaron King comes in with a two-parter. The year is 2031. And then two questions. Number one, is Kirby still our coach? And how many national championships has Georgia football won in the last decade? Hmm. I would say just based on the math there, yes, he is still the coach. Yeah, so ten, fast um, forward 10 years. Yeah. I mean, so yeah. that puts it, what, 10 – He'd be 15 years head coach, right? Is my math yeah. right Yeah, this is year um, six. Yeah, 15, 16, somewhere around there. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's within the realm of possibility there. I mean, Rick's hung around for a long time. So, um, yeah, I, I think that that's definitely within the realm of possibility. Within, I don't believe that he has um, desires to go to the NFL. 
Yeah. Um, I don't know that there's a bigger job on the planet that would entice him. Um, unless like for some reason, like he became the athletic director at some point in the future, but I don't know that that's necessarily on his track, but mm-hmm. could be. Um, yeah, so I'm yeah, with you. I'll, I'll I don't, say- I don't I'll see him going for another school. Yeah. Yeah. So, so answer number one, Kirby's still the coach. Yes. How many okay. national championships has Georgia won in the last decade? Oh, man. This one was a doozy. I'll let you answer that one first since I answered the first one first. <laughs> um, so, uh, it's, it's so, it's so hard because of the, the Munsoning in me. It's like, <laughs> You know, should I even say such things? Um, I mean, I would like to think, I'm going to say two. I think that's not too crazy. I'm going to say two. Including this year? (laughs) (laughs) Two to three. Over, under at two and a half. (laughs) I'm taking the over. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, I love that answer. That, that that was where I was kind of wavering, two to three. Uh, if he stays for ten more years, I mean, if he's he's here, that because first off, you know, Kirby still being here in twenty thirty one means that we're still doing pretty good, and he hasn't left for the NFL, right? Like, right. so I would think so. I think so. All right, so I, I go two, you go three. Or, or you, or you said you were going over two and a half, but is three your number? Three is my number, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I wasn't so sure. I, I, I have that rooted in reality, right? So you got like, there's nobody going to go on. I don't, I don't believe that we're going to see another run like Saban's um, by mm-hmm. anyone in this in this day and age, particularly in this conference with the level of talent that you've got at so many schools. Mm-hmm. Um, the SEC is just becoming a much more difficult place to, to win a title at these days, I feel like. Now... I guess maybe I should back up actually because I just I just remembered they're gonna they're changing the rules for the college football playoff. So this time period we're talking about here is gonna be in that twelve team playoff world. So there is a possibility for us to, you know, be squeaking into more conversations and more opp- having more opportunities to play into those kinds of things in the down the road, you know. Not that I necessarily think that a twelve team playoff changes what I hope are how it looks like for the next, you know, six, seven years. Um, yeah. I thought of something else when you were just talking through that, because you said no one else is going to go on a Saban like run, which also started making me think, hmm, he's, how old is Nick Saban? Well, yeah. yeah, well, how many of those 10 years will Nick Saban still be at Alabama for? Because he's so he's 69 years old. It's so true. by 2031, will Nick Saban still be the head coach at Alabama? <laughs> no, I would think not, right? Yeah. So I think that only increases increases the odds. I'm not going to change my number or anything, but I think that that helps that uh, become a reality. Yeah, I'll stick with three. But yeah, there's right. definitely a lot of variables wrapped up in that answer uh, in that in that yeah. time period. Yeah, and for the on the playoff thing too, I think they what like they principally agreed to it or whatever, but <laughs> that's not set in stone. And you got to remember, you've got the alliance that was formed, right? That's going to try mm-hmm. to fight that. And then um, also, I think, too, like the the SEC expanding and adding mm-hmm. Texas and Oklahoma, I think, is making everyone else mad. So I don't know. Like, I think there we could end up getting some pushback and blowback around expanding the playoff. Um, I wouldn't say that's a done deal uh, after all that stuff went down. So but we'll see. For sure. All right. Uh, 51 to 7 GATA. As we get ready for the yearly, should the game be in Jacksonville or home and home talk, what are y'all's thoughts about the location of the game? And because, John, you always ask a clarifying question and did 51 to 7 GTA give his thoughts, he went ahead and preemptively gave them to you. So this is nice. Um, <laughs> so let, me, let me let him respond first. So he said, I'm good with the game in Jacksonville, but I understand the other side. I would be okay with it being a home and home series, especially if that's what Coach Kirby Smart wants. The one thing I don't care for is the game being Atlanta. Make those SOVs earn their way to Atlanta. Uh, so how do you? What do you think? Are you a, are you a uh, home and home guy? Or are you a Jacksonville guy? So I am a hybrid guy. 
I would okay. love to see I would love to see us go to a, a hybrid schedule for this game. So you're guaranteed in a four year cycle that or even in a three year cycle that you're going to go and play at all three of these locations. So I think okay. that it's better it's better for recruiting. You heard Kirby actually talk about that this week, I think, um, mm. where he talked about and was asked, I think it was Dean Leggy. I think, um, but um, he was asked about the Florida game and recruiting, and he was like, "Yeah, you know, you know, possibly our biggest rival is, um, you know, we don't ever get to play on our campus, and so it makes it difficult and all that stuff." And one of the reporters asked if if they can get tickets to the to the game for for recruits if they want to go and, and visit and stuff. And he's like, "It's complicated." <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't sound very he didn't sound very warm and fuzzy about it, so. No, um, I think that I think that if we were to, to go to a hybrid approach, that that would be the ideal scenario for me. So what that looks like is you have a home and home, and then you have a Jacksonville game. So mm-hmm. one year you play in Georgia, one year you play at Florida, and then the next year you're playing in Jacksonville. That way you have a, you know, you hit the campus because it's it's ridiculous to me that we've never like in my lifetime we've never played at the swamp. To me, that's just ridiculous. That should never has, be. Used. It, it has happened in your lifetime, but only once. Um, but yeah, right. <laughs> um, when, when, when did it happen? <laughs> uh, I think it was ninety four. Uh, okay. So uh, I, I'm not 100 percent sure on the year. Yeah, yeah, it was ninety four because. Um, so it was when they renovated the Gator Bowl to be the Jaguars. I was Jaguar about to say, were they renovating it? Okay. Yeah. So they, so we did a home and home while they were renovating it for the, for the Jaguars. Um, got it. And I know it was then because in 95, the day the Braves won the world series, uh, is the day that, uh, is the day the Spurrier hung half a hundred on Georgia in Sanford stadium. So, um, and I went to that game, by the way. <laughs> I was at that game. I was in high school. I went to that game uh, with my sister, who was at Georgia. See, so what I hear you saying is, is that we we owe them one. We do, yeah, for sure. I, I'm kind of torn. Like, I was, you know, when I was in college, I was very much at the mindset of, you know, Jacksonville is evil, and you know, it's a home game for Florida. But in hindsight, it's just because we never won. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I was in college, um, you know, like I went there like every year I was in school and never saw us win. So I, I think it was more, more of that. Um, now that we're, you know, got things back the way they should be, I, I, it is a fun trip. Like I love going there. I, I have not done it in many years. I haven't been back for a while. Um, but it's always a good time. Um, and I know one of the things that people worry about is, you know, for a lot of Georgia fans that live in South Georgia, like that's the one game they go to, you know, every year. Um, so I get that. I So I definitely don't want to see it leave Florida or leave Jacksonville altogether. Um, I, don't, I, I am not a home-and-home home guy. I, I could see it doing a rotation like you're saying. Um, three years is going to be tough, though. Um, I would think they would probably do four. Like even if it's, you know, uh, home Jacksonville away Jacksonville something like that you know for for your rotation so again to your point like every player assuming they stay for four years would still get to play in all three in all three spots I agree I don't think you put it in Atlanta ever um, no yeah the, okay. the idea of playing Florida in Atlanta is um, just makes me sick to my stomach actually yeah I don't like that don't, don't we don't need to let them come into our state for any any kind of recruiting so yeah, seriously. Yeah, seriously. That's actually a, a great a great example. Okay. Uh, next question from Frip Dog, my dad. Uh, first, he wanted to thank Lou. Greg. What's up, Lou? <laughs> he wanted to thank uh, Greg Mountain to the Seas for the bourbon tailgate for Kentucky, um, and he's, he said that he and John Tweets Sports discussed weeded bourbon and rye, and so my dad had. Uh, had, had, had poured one and asked if we had ever had it. I don't have the picture of it up right now, but I, I know I had never had it before. Um, so uh, I'm not exactly sure what it was. Trying to put glasses on it. We'll have to find it. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so so he, he asked a question and then he corrected himself. So first off, first he said, 
how many plays will we have in 31 personnel on offense? And then he corrected himself to say 13 personnel. So when I read it, I was like, man, are we going to have any 31 personnel? Like I'm not, I'm not, I haven't seen I that in a long time. I was, I was doing the Googling like 31 personnel. What is that? So, yeah. So, so for, yeah. So for, for the uninformed, the, when you, when you hear that, when you hear like, so 13 personnel, for example, the first digit. So the one of 13 is how many running backs there are running backs. Field. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then the second digit is how many tight ends. So 13 personnel would be one running back, three tight ends. Um, so, you know, I, I always like, uh, I, I used to be preferential to, personnel grouping that starts with the number two uh because i love the fullback but uh we don't see much <laughs> of that anymore so that's okay um so how many how many plays will we have with 13 personnel on offense against florida um we we have seen some we have seen some um and goal line situations we could see it in goal line yeah because I mean, if you think about it now right basically you, if you've got you could have bowers washington and fitzpatrick um, right. which would be pretty sweet. So even if it's not like, you know, the jumbo package, for example, uh, the other thing too, is like, you know, uh, sometimes you'll see, they put like an offensive lineman in like a high number Jersey and, and let him play tight end quote unquote. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like having an extra tackle. Um, I don't know. I'd set the over under at two and a half plays. I'll take the that over. Be, take the over. Three. Okay. Yeah. I, I think three. Okay. We'll change it to three and it's a push. <laughs> So, I don't know. <laughs> but hey, that led to us explaining the the personnel uh, grouping numbers. Um, so, I actually that's something I actually learned recently. I, 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 you know, these are the things that you learn when you listen to you know, like uh, Dog Sports Live and Chef and Bulger. They, they talk about these things. So, I know, right? You could you could learn you could learn something. <laughs> uh, too funny. Um, okay, J Rake T. Who do we see at quarterback for Florida? The below average running back or the above average running back? I, w- wait, what? I don't even, That's oh, not oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Jones or Richardson? <laughs> Jones or Richardson, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that I think that they've got to change something up for their season. Um, I yeah. believe that if em- Emory Jones, if Emory Jones is taking snaps behind center, um, Florida is eff- effectively waving its white flag, and Dan Mullen is basically daring the boosters and the Florida administration to fire him. Um, yeah. Cause if, if Emory Jones starts, it's going to be an absolute bloodbath. Uh, Richardson d- does worry me a little bit. However, he just doesn't have a whole lot of body of work. It's kind of like, I, I feel like that he's a more, he's probably a better runner um, than um, shoot. I'm blanking on his name. Arkansas's quarterback. Um, uh, Jefferson. Jefferson, KJ. yeah, he's yeah. KJ. Yep, yeah. he's uh, he's probably a better runner based on what I've seen, mm-hmm. um, and I'm not sure about the throwing the throwing aspect. It'll certainly change how I look at that game, but yeah, uh, I think Richardson probably presents a little bit more unknown and variable for us. Um, but I, if I were in yeah. their shoes, I would I would not I would not play Emory Jones. I wouldn't have played Emory Jones at the beginning of the season either. But that's just. Yeah, I just, totally agree. Yeah. I, I think at this point they've got to they've got to change it up. So I expect it to be Richardson. Uh, my follow up question is which between Jones and Richardson, who is the below average running back and who's the above average running back? <laughs> I'm not sure which is which, but I think it'll be Richardson. I I, I would actually be pretty surprised um, if Jones is the starter in the cocktail party. So yeah, yeah, the quarterback guru. What are you gonna do, bro? Oh my gosh. Yeah, for real. <laughs> All right. Uh, friend of the show, Tim Riley checks in. What is the victory bourbon of choice thus far this year after wins? Uh, he adds for himself that Kentucky Al was tasty Saturday night. Hashtag bourbon Twitter. Do you, have you had a go-to uh, this season uh, or do you, or you kind of mix it up? I've, I've been mixing it up. Um, I guess earlier in the season I was on a, a um, I was on a uh, uh, John and I, John tweets and I have, I j- have a joke because he sent me a picture of this bottle that he bought and I had been eyeing it for a while uh, earlier this summer. It was called Three Chords, Three Chords Twelve Year Bourbon. Mm-hmm. Um, 
it's fairly expensive for you know the off the shelf varieties of you know MGP sourced bourbon, but um, he he was he was a raving fan of it. So I've been I had been drinking that earlier in the season, but then I started getting low on it, and I was like, oh shoot, I don't want to completely run out. <laughs> so I switched it up. I've been doing makers, been doing some off the shelf stuff. I've been doing bourbon and cokes more lately. Uh, the victory one last weekend was uh, special reserve. So I've I've been mixing it up, man. I, 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 there's no rhyme or reason. After Clemson, I was like definitely getting something fancy at the bar. So I got like Uncle Nearest, which is like you mm. know, one of those like hard, tough to find ones. Um, right. Yeah, man, it's it's been all over the place. But the point is, is that I have a bourbon and I relax outside in the patio and listen to music and you know put some put another game on and just hang out. Yeah, I yeah, I I have not been consistent either. Um I would say like of choice thus far. I, I think I have done the Buffalo Trace after after multiple. Uh I really like that. So that's probably one of my, my favorites right now. Even just like the regular Buffalo Trace. Like like I've told you, I, I can't like find that around here. Um yeah. And uh, I actually brought home the rest of my dad's bottle <laughs> after the Arkansas game. So we, my dad and I had that at his house after Arkansas. Um, and I, I, that's one of the one of the glasses I had after after uh, Kentucky last week. If you like yeah. if you like Buffalo Trace, you'll probably really enjoy um, the Eagle Rare. Um, I do have a bottle yeah. of Eagle Rare um, that's a store pick that I haven't opened yet that I'm kind of saving. Um, but yeah, the. It's the same mash bill as it's the same mash bill as the the Buffalo Trace, but um, I don't see what Hunter's family fantasy football team has to do with any of this. But you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. I, I would I would say probably for me uh, either the Buffalo Trace or the Knob Creek Nine. Those are kind of my my go tos right now. So Knob Creek's been a solid go to. I love Buffalo Trace. It's such a solid go to. There's so many good bourbons out there that don't cost eighty bucks. So. That's that's part of what I have a, a tough time swallowing most of the time. That Kentucky yeah, most, Owl is pretty expensive, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most of the ones that I have are like, I don't know, twenty to thirty or thirty to forty. I would say general is, is what I've got. So I will tell you that um, I was um, someone was hyping up a, a cocktail that I had not had ever, but I've seen it and I've heard about it for forever, but. I may, I may, I may make myself a Sazerac um, after we win uh, next weekend. So I may make a cocktail, Tim T Dog. Mm, a cocktail for the cocktail party. Cocktail party, exactly. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Nice. Uh, let's see. We got uh, John Michael D. Oh God, this one is hard. Like I'm going to have a hard time uh, talking through this. I don't know that I want to talk about this. I'll read the question though. What good Georgia player? had the most costly error in program history, and why was it Terrence Edwards in Jacksonville in 2002? Ugh. <laughs> mm. uh, and I don't know about you, John, but like I was, I was at that game, so I was sitting in the stands for that. Um, and I don't have it up right now, but John had, he, 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 in his question, he, uh, he put like a screenshot of an excerpt from an article uh, from that game about you know talking about that moment and what happened uh you know something that i'm just gonna go off topic on this or it's still on the topic but something that i heard a couple of years ago that is strange to me is uh terrence edwards was interviewed within the past few years and and you know like poor guy like you know he's like the most decorated wide receiver in georgia history like he owns like all the records but of course that's all anyone ever asks him about is that one play um but he was saying like i think like he has his memory wrong about the game like he was like well like you know when i dropped that pass like you know we weren't losing i'm like uh what <laughs> you know, here we were that was like the second to last drive uh, i'm pretty sure um we were we were losing and that that would have tied the game uh but anyways i uh, I, I can't think of a, of another one. Were you at that game? Were you at the cocktail party in 2002? No, uh, I don't believe that I was because yeah. I went to, I went, I went to, which, 
I'm trying to remember. I only went to a handful of, of cocktail parties in my in my time, um, okay. mostly because of <laughs> the the Munson in me was mm-hmm. that I went to one that we lost and I was very upset about it. I got my wallet stolen in a sea of people. Um, <laughs> I, I got pickpocketed in in Jacksonville, so I don't have very positive um, well. vibes. Where where um, where were you, were you like at the game or like at the landing or just like in walking the, around? It was at the it was at the landing. Um, oh. I believe I believe it was after the game we were going to go party and stuff. But um, yeah. there's literally, literally I at the time I had this five foot two girlfriend, so she was like almost getting like swallowed by people go, going down, and like I mean literally we're just like bumping like it's just a sea of people, and I'm like pushing people away trying to keep her on two feet basically, and. You know, I at the at at the end, like trying to like go and pay for something or pay for a taxi or something like that. Like I, I reached back and my wallet is gone, and I'm like, "What the heck, dude?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I was at that game, and like there was bad juju that whole game. Like there were people that had already printed like SEC East championship T-shirts. So it's like you don't do that before you win. Um, it just. Uh, Horrible game. I don't want to talk about this anymore. I do think uh, I actually have. Uh, I have probably. I think I have another one. <laughs> it's even. It's even worse. See, see, the problem is, is that I can remember. I, I have the worst memory possible. So you are, you are, you are perfect, and you and Patrick Garvin are probably the two perfect people to, to answer this question. <laughs> I mean, I think it's got to be Dominic Sanders. Dominic Sanders. Are you talking about? Last year, Tua. or what are you talking about? Tua, the Bama oh, game. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He got looked off. Although okay. I don't know if you put that on Dom Sanders or on Malcolm Parrish, but um, maybe yeah. that was kind of a duo. But you could yeah. it. But I mean, Dom Sanders is up there on the all-time interception list, and you know he got he's you know you talk about quarterback looking off the safety, and that's exactly what happened on. That ill-fated pass to Devonta Smith from Tua. So I don't know, but I, I love I love both those guys. Um, you know, they did a lot more good than than than, than harm. And that's the thing, man. That's what's so hard about those guys. So you got you know Dom Sanders, like one of the all-time leading interceptor interceptors at, at Georgia. Terrence Edwards owns like every single receiving record possible at Georgia. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And too, like for me, like when stuff like that happens, like I end up like I was like sick to my stomach the whole ride home <laughs> from that guy got, party in O2. Because like I knew I, everyone was gonna be slamming Terrence. I just felt so bad for him. I've got another one for you. hmm Chris Conley. Yeah. Uh, I like I can't like fault that him. It. Like the ball's in your area, it's just like natural reaction that, to catch the ball. But I know what you're saying. Knock it down. Got it down. Yeah, Bad knock down. it down. I mean, like, but who in, I mean, I, maybe there is someone, maybe there is someone on this planet who would have the presence of mind to knock that ball down. I know I wouldn't. I mean, you're taught your whole life to catch the ball. That, that's, that's hard to do as a receiver, you know? Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe some yeah. people would, would think to have bat it down, but. I don't know. Maybe if we had taken a timeout, we could have talked about it. I should have spiked the ball. Spike the ball. Why are we, t- <laughs> this, this question is bad, Juju. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Uh, let's take move on to ha- my misery. Let's move on to happier times. Uh oh. We know what time it is. What, what is that? Oh, oh. Oh. The, the champ is here. It's time. The champ is here. <laughs> Alright, since we know we can't concentrate with the music on. It's time for Coach Trills. Coach Trill Bills. <laughs> Over unders by week edition. I don't know. Right. I don't know if Coach signed up for this every every week. <laughs> <laughs> I may have to mix it up. May have to mix it up a little bit. I went with the same last time. Uh, I actually have another one, but I, I will maybe we'll unveil that next week. Uh, okay, <laughs> over under tweets about JT's status for Florida during the week. Over under set at one thousand. <laughs> Uh, I'm taking the over. <laughs> Absolutely agreed. That's a, I feel like that's a slam dunk over. <laughs> a slam dunk over. We could just literally just search JT Daniels status. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be insane. And especially after the article this week, 
you know, with Kirby talking about them maybe both playing, like he's just throwing fuel in the fire. It's going to be, it's going to be crazy. Oh, you know what we didn't talk about? If I, as what are we talking about? During coaches over unders. Did you see the, it was like a national reporter, I think, asked Stetson, I think this is like in the post game, after the Kentucky game, he was like, what would you say to someone who says that, or who asks, or what would you say to someone who says that they don't think you're good enough to lead this team to a national title or like something like that? And he was like, what? He's like, what would I, what would I do? Like, what would I say to them? He's like, yeah, like, what would you say to, he's like, or, he's like, to someone who says that? He's like, yeah. He's like, well, I guess I would just walk away because there's nothing I can say to them to change their mind. So that's what I would do. And that's all I said. Like, mm. who, who, like, who asks a college kid that question? Like, I don't, I don't get like for all the stuff that people talk about, like fans being dumb and, you know, like fans being irrational and whatever, like, I don't know. I don't get that. That, that takes me off. I think it was uh, Dennis Dodd, I believe is who asked the question. I don't, I'm not really sure who he is, but uh, did you, did you even see that? Mm-mm. No, I don't think I saw that. Yeah. You should, you should, you should hit that on the Google. Uh, the, the question. It was in the post game. Anyways, I just I didn't like that. That that angered me. Uh, okay, so we got that. We got that set at uh, over under one thousand. Take the over. Um, <laughs> take, the, take the over all day long for UGA fans to talk about the quarterback controversy that apparently exists. Uh, let's see. <laughs> ooh, ooh, this one we already talked about, kind of, but but this is for next week. Player. Oh God. Play- <laughs> Players mentioned in Kirby's press conference that are hopeful for Florida over under <laughs> stay at three and a half. So let me let me review the notes that we discussed earlier oh, today. Uh, in the bye week press conference, he hit three that were hopeful. Uh, to recap, Aaron Smith, <laughs> Kenny McIntosh, and Amir Speed. So you know, had Coach Chilbo asked this for this week for the bye week, it would have been the under. So. Hmm. This is a this is a very I gotta say this is a very uh, well set line at three and a half. That's because like I'm having a hard time thinking about this here. We can't push, you know. I'm taking gotta... I'm taking the over. Mm, man, so you think there's going to be one? So do you think the list will still be the same, and then he's going to potentially add an extra, or could there be some movement here with who's? Well, who's... all right. So let's re- let's review the list. So we had Milton. You had Arian Smith. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You're, yo, slam dunk over. So he had, because Milton wasn't there yet, because this week was on Monday. And the Milton thing We have, we have McIntosh. We have JT. What else? What else we got? Okay, so the ones that he mentioned this week that he said hopeful were, yeah, Arian Smith, Kenny McIntosh, and Amir Speed. Those were the three. Amir Speed. All right. There's, so that's yeah. five that I count. Uh, okay. And then you've got all the other guys that – have been on the, you know, like Pickens. Pickens hasn't even been mentioned. So, yeah, I'm definitely yeah, I mean, taking I don't the think over. He'll, I don't think he'll be hopeful, but I'm still taking the over. I'm with you. Shocking, we agree. Ooh, we're two for two. This is like season one of my got a podcast. We're agreeing on everything. <laughs> I mean, I think that it's one of those things where it's like, um, it, it really just depends on what reporters decide to ask him. Because if they don't ask him, he's definitely not going to tell. So we just have to rely on them asking about five or six players. I, I think it's I think it's uh, Logan I, if I you're listening, like, come through with us. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we can trust. I feel like we can trust the press corps to, to ask. So I'll take in the over. Um, okay, just this speak. one hits this one hits close for ho- close to home for you. Uh, over under bi week fall wedding mentions on Twitter. Over under set at one hundred fifty. Uh, I'm definitely taking the over. Breaking news, there's at least one already that Coach Trillbill uh, retweeted <laughs> tonight while I was in soccer practice. So we, I, I told him that we've, we've won down 149 to go. Hashtag keep chopping. So, uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. Mm, 150, but if I were to do like a Twitter search, mm, I go push. <laughs> interesting interesting enough uh i have a uh, one of my one of my students my, one of my former students that uh i did the youth group with at church um got married this week hmm. Hmm. okay okay 
technically it counts as a bi- technically counts as a bi week fall wedding. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Now we're at the two. We only need 148 more. I'm going to assume, <laughs> I'm gonna assume that was mentioned on Twitter. So I guess I'll take you over. Man, we're about in a thousand uh, on agreeing here. Uh, last one for Coach Trill Bill. Uh, over under kids born within the next calendar year named Stetson or Bennett, 10 and a half. Oh, well, I mean, the fact I mean, that he that it's Stetson or Bennett, you know, increases the odds there. So, yeah, I mean, in the state of Georgia and the city of Atlanta, like, <laughs> and it also depends. Also, we gotta, you know, let, let's talk about the factors here, right? Like, how far does Georgia go, and who is involved? Like, if Stetson leads us to the Natty, like that gets blown out of the water. Let's like all the kids. All the every kid born in Georgia in 2022 is going to be named Stetson or Bennett. <laughs> if that happens, um, but uh, right. that's why I, I, I'm going to be. I'm going to be. I mean, I'm gonna, Bennett. Bennett being um, Bennett being a, a fairly generic name. I'm going to go with the over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll take the over. I'll take the over for the clean sweep of us agreeing on everything. Uh, we're throwing it back like it's season one during the bye week. <laughs> that is, uh, that's it what we had for what we had for the listener questions. So yeah, that's uh, all we got. That's all, that's we, all got. we got. Yeah, that's what we got. Well, you know, usually th- that, that's about the same amount of time. It's just that usually we're like 45 minutes into analyzing <laughs> stuff. <before> we get <laughs> <laughs> We've oh. been talking about bourbon and the offense and the defense for 45 minutes before we even start to listen to questions. Uh, that's true. That's true. I'm talking. I, I, I wax poetic about the offense when you're talking about the defense. <laughs> <laughs> or, 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 or vice versa. <laughs> uh, too good. Too good. What? Uh, oh, oh um, don't, we, don't, don't we have some reviews for the people? Oh, we do have a review. God, and you even told me to read the review, and I still forgot to read the review. <laughs> All right. Yeah, let me, let me check to see if – I know we have at least one new review. There was at least one that I was pretty proud about. <laughs> okay, we do. We do have one new review. Uh, reminder, if you, you know, rate the show uh, and leave us a re- review, we will read it uh, on the show. Um, when John reminds me to. <laughs> okay, so this one comes in from the Saw Dog. Uh, subject: Excellent content. These guys know their stuff. They have fun. It's an enjoyable listen. I often find myself extending my run to listen to the last fifteen minutes of the show. So in essence, this show is helping me stay in shape. Go dogs. Uh, <laughs> so you know, I mean, I feel like that's pretty awesome. You know, one of the things that we've talked about. Uh, is how we have both focused on on fitness a bit, you know, over over the past year, and we're sure. spreading that love now to listeners. So that's pretty sweet. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad that we could. Um, I'm glad that I'm not the only person that listens to podcasts and run. I feel like I'm like a weirdo when I tell people, yeah, I just listen, I'm just gonna put a podcast on and listen. So, like Will and Tony and Scott, you know, I, I usually hit waiting list since last Saturday. I hit. Uh, you know, dog stats and Graham, I hit Logan and Walker. Like that's usually what yeah. I do when I'm running as I listen to those guys. And sometimes mm-hmm. I listen to us just to make sure that I don't sound like a complete douche. Well, <laughs> see, I have to listen to us because I edit it. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Understood. Understood. And you know, you know, you're listening because you're honing your craft. That's what you're supposed mm. to say. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's film review. It's just like film review, uh, right? Exactly. Exactly. How are you going to improve? If, if you're not, you know, you're doing it. Exactly. Uh, hey, you're either elite or you're not, Jim. All right? Ooh, there Calm you down. go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I mean, look, you know, not every podcast mentions Brock Bowers in the preseason. I'm just saying. Like, you know, <laughs> some podcasts do, some podcasts don't. You know, you know, you know whatever. You're either elite or you're sometimes, not. Sometimes we do our homework and it works out. <laughs> yeah yeah let's we'll 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 ignore the times that we've been like awfully wrong <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly <laughs> uh, awesome uh I, I gotta say too we got um 
there have been several folks like, you know, this is not an official review or whatever, but there's been a couple of folks like lately tweeting and saying like, Hey, you know, what, what, what podcasts do you listen to? And, um, you know, just like, I just want to say thank you for like everyone who responded and, and tagged us in it. Uh, very humbling. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, to see. So we, we see it. Um, uh, we appreciate it. And, uh, I don't know. It's, 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 I'm glad that folks enjoy uh, us two dudes sitting around talking to dogs. <laughs> yeah, uh, the same to the same token. Like this is when you and I talked. When you asked me about doing this, I was like, "Listen, I just want to make sure that people enjoy it because, yeah, you know, you just want to you just want to make it sound like it's just two dudes, just like your two buddies. Like you're you're just listening to your two buddies talking while you're just sitting there. Yeah, I mean, well, that was kind of the whole thing, right? It was like. You know what? If nothing else, I get to sit around and talk Georgia football with my friend for a couple hours a week. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That was kind of how I looked exactly. at it. Uh, and, oh, and, 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 and the, the plus side of it is, is that we've turned you into a bourbon guy. So that's I, awesome. I know. I know. I, I feel like we, you, you could probably, you could definitely dig into the archives and see like me, like, oh, you and your bourbon. I, I drink beer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did not. Did not see that coming. I gotta get. I gotta credit uh, John. Uh, John tweets on the uh, the Gateway cocktail that he recommended to me, and that's what that's mm. what got it started for me. And now, now I'm booked. Now I, I haven't made a cocktail in a while. I just just go with the bourbons. So honestly, I haven't made a whole, a cocktail in a while. I, a buddy was talking about the Sazerac today, which I mm. like got the recipe for, like a Sazerac that he had. That's why I mentioned that because it sounds amazing. John's got some uh, bourbon cocktails like the Bombardier or something like that that I haven't ever had either. But I, I don't know, man. Like sometimes I just don't want to mess around with it. I just just put a cube in the glass and pour some bourbon in it. That's all. I it's care. a lot faster if you just pour bourbon over ice. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's, 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 it's a lot quicker. It doesn't doesn't take it's the time. A, it's an amazing cocktail. So, are you guys doing? Are you doing the Amaclola this weekend? Is that is that the yep. plan or okay? Yep. Okay. So, uh, we've got uh, Carter. Carter's got a um, the most famous podcaster on my got a podcast. He's got uh, a big game this Saturday against a team that has not lost in three years. So it's kind of like the antithesis of the Florida yeah. game. Like we're <laughs> we're coming up against the we're coming up against this immovable object, mm-hmm. and um, I've been get, I literally like I, I could I've gotten texts from like three or four dads. Cause he's been hurt cause long story short, but like he basically got stabbed with a pencil at school on his foot and hasn't been able to like kick a ball for like a week and a half. Yikes. Um, and so he wasn't at the games this past weekend and he wasn't at practice. I made him go on Monday, but um, he did, he was not happy about that. And we have been resting him ever since, but like, wait, yeah, Carter, he, uh, you got the Carter got stabbed in the foot. Yeah. Oh, was a pencil the, mean, was, the, mean, the mean streets of Cobb County schools. The mean streets of Due West Elementary. <laughs> Apparently, there was this pencil sticking out on the ground, and somehow it managed to like pierce through my kid's shoe and stab him in the in the top of the foot. Which, if you know anything about soccer, kicking with the top of your foot is pretty important, particularly for a goalkeeper. Yeah. Um, so he. So uh, there was there was pencil not... pop involved? Were they playing pencil pop or something? Does that still no, do kids was... still do that? Do kids still do no, that? No, he was. No, yeah, uh, no, they don't. Uh, <laughs> they they also don't collect amazing NFL uh, helmet pencils either. <laughs> mm, true, true. Or or have awesome trapper keepers. They don't have like the uh, dispenser at the school where you you hope you get the right team. And no, scared. surprisingly, they don't. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, there's apparently a pencil that was just sticking out of the ground on the field at at, at school, like, and he just like fluke, total fluke, like just went to go kick a ball and it literally lanced into his foot and the school nurse had to like, like they had to like take him, like take his shoe off and all that stuff and like physically remove it. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. I feel like so we, need, had, we need, I feel like we need so I feel like we need further inge- investigation on this. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Trust me. Trust me. As, as, as the dad, that's like, as the dad, that's like rub, rub some dirt on it. Like I definitely right. was, have been awakened like I don't know, man. He's definitely. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever. I don't know if you've ever been stabbed by a pencil. 
I still have like a mark. I'm like, dude, sorry, man, you're going to have a mark there for the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah. We have like the graphite's like stuck in your skin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but anyway, we've been resting him. So he's got a big game this weekend. He's like, I'm like, dude, are you going to be ready to go? And he's like, I'm hopeful. <laughs> 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 Did you seriously say that? Yes. Uh, oh my gosh. Uh, uh, Carter. Carter, uh, you know, the most the most famous podcaster on my got a podcast and a listener, apparently. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. No, he knows he knows who he knows who's on the he knows who's on the um, on the docket for, for Saturday. So uh, I have a feeling he's gonna be full tilt for the game. Oh uh, man, it's so good. So good. <laughs> but yes, we are going to Amicalo this uh, this Sunday. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. We'll well hey, we'll we'll both have our mountain trips. We we will we will be we're going to Boone and back uh That's true. on Sunday. So um I haven't been to Boone in, in forever, so that'll be fun. Did it, um, didn't we go to Boone for ski weekend for the fraternity, didn't we? Uh, or was that Cherokee? Was that Cherokee? Yeah, we went to like Cherokee. We went to like yeah, the slopes that are like right by the casinos or whatever in Cherokee. That's how I remember it. Yeah. Right. What, I don't know if you can call them slopes, maybe more like a um, sheet of ice. I don't know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It was a little, it was a little sketchy. We, we did, it was not the best weather. Uh, I it, do know. Yeah. I do. I do remember a friend of the show, Tim Riley uh, showing up to the, that particular weekend, like looking like he was about to go to snowshoe. <laughs> 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 I had my own stuff. I had my own stuff. Uh, that was also the weekend that the tuck rule happened. That's, that's back when that was. The the Tom Brady tuck rule happened while we were on that trip. I don't know if you remember mm. that. I remember watching that in the hotel. Yeah, for sure. Nice. Anyway. <laughs> we, right, we'll, we'll, we, will, uh, we will be back for a normal uh, – yeah, so one episode next week, right? Uh, so we won't have anything to, anything to review. Um, but I think we'll, we'll be back next episode for the, uh, the, the Florida pre- preview, right? Does that sound right? That sounds right. Yeah. It sounds about right. Okay. 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 And double check it, double check it on the schedule. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, also I've, I've shipped it. All the, all the hats that have been ordered are shipped out. Um, so that was, a, that was a milestone on the, on the new process. So that was cool. So if you're listening and you've ordered a hat, it's, uh, at least on the way. Um, and, uh, we, we, we could do more. So check out store.mygotapodcast.com if you want to, if you want to get a, my got a, a, my got a podcast app. Jim is eagerly waiting to sew the patches on at soccer practice. <laughs> yeah, like literally that's what I did this week. Uh, awesome. Cool. All right, man. Well, uh, hand, hand, handcrafted my got a podcast hats. That's right. Hey, it says on the description that the patches are hand sewn on the hats. I'm like, yeah, that's me. Like I literally sew them on the hats. Uh, like, hey, you know, I took home ec. And uh, my grandma was a, was a seamstress, so it's in it's in my blood. So, God bless you, God bless you, Jim. You're hey, a gentleman look, and a scholar, sir. Look, you know Chase has one uh, from Seven Six, and he tweeted out that it's a high quality hat. So you know you can. Go. <laughs> awesome. Uh, All right, man. We'll uh, we'll, we'll sync up for the Florida game to uh, to talk about how we're going to put four L's in Florida. Amen. Go dogs. Go dogs. <laughs> <laughs>